Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. These guys in the West either don't get it because, you know, they have a little problem or they don't want to get it. That is, they do not want to accept what Russia is telling them. Russia wants to be treated, and I would say, for good reason, equally. That is, they don't want to be looked down because there's no reason, let's say, for friends to look down on Russia or for Germany to look down actually for no country. No country on this planet has a reason to look down on Russia. Why? Look at this on the map. Look how big it is. It has 145 million people. It has, it has almost double Germany's population. Definitely doubled uh, doubles France, po France population, population is like 60 million friends. Great Britain again, about 60, double. It has the most nuclear weapons on this planet, submarines, cities, infrastructure, energy. It has a big, big potential. So I don't think Russia has a great culture. It shouldn't, uh, you know, shouldn't be looked down on. I can think of many countries on this planet that have, you know, they're small, insignificant, poor, no resources. Yeah, there's some culture here and there, you know, small number, but still, they're not looked down. Or you might, you might find a reason to say, see, that's why that country, that country actually is unimportant. And I can find a lot of these kind of countries. But still, in front of the law or at United Nations, especially United Nations, Russia is in the Security Council, the UN Security Council. So what is Russia missing? Democracy? Oh, okay. And Putin asked these guys in the West, and not only, and Lavrov, to be viewed as equals. As equal. And they were not. Now, after these two years that we're going to turn, you know, going to enter the third year in about what, two months or so, the West which are, I don't know, in this case, United States of America and about 20 to 30 other weasel vassal states, they couldn't kneel Russia. They tried militarily in Ukraine, with Ukraine, militarily with all the weapons, intelligence, and all they got, oh, almost all. Financially, economically, couldn't kneel it. 12 rounds of sanctions from Europe, United States, embargoes, uh, oil price cap, uh, impose and scare other countries not to do business with Russia, and still Russia is not cracking after two years alone. So don't you think that it's something that your enemy should at least respect? You can't beat this country and you're about, what, 30 countries, weasel countries try to destroy it, or at least fight it, and it's not collapsing? I mean, if, if that would have been, let's say, Saddam Hussein, would have been done with all this, whatever was pumped in Ukraine, would, would have been done in what? In a week or two. So that's a difference between a that kind of country and that kind of country. I mean, no disrespect towards Iraq, but it's about, what, 20-some million people, you know, great culture, but still, it's not military old, not the same thing. So you can roll over it in a week. And which they did, you know, about not a week, but nevertheless. So my point is here, even now, even now, after yesterday's Putin's Q&A marathon, you remember he had four hours of, he said, this is what we are, this is what we do, we're not losing, we're not going to lose. We are going to fulfill our four demands, the goals for which we entered the war. We invaded this country. They said, we will do this. And so far, they're in the process. Slowly, stagnantly at times, but still is not nil. And you have Macron coming and says, well, I will talk to Putin. I'm ready to talk to Putin if he behaves. What is this? You're not a teacher. You're not a parent. You're just a, a leader, mind you, weasel one, of a, what, 60-some million people country with what 300 nuclear warheads with a, with a dying economy with no energy but nuclear energy no resources what are you talking about you are ready to talk to putin if he to putin behaves 
Did you hear the guy yesterday? Macron, I guarantee you he was briefed by a weasel, uh, fun, 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 okay? He was briefed by one of what Putin said. He didn't get it. You try to, to treat that guy with disrespect, what do you think you're gonna get in return? A smack? Most likely. So let me show you this article coming from the new voice of Ukraine. And I'm gonna show you how Macron doesn't get it. It's like Macron is doing Putin a favor. Putin doesn't give a fuck about Macron, let's put it this way. With Macron, Ma uh, without Macron, uh, Putin is still going to do what he wants to do and will do it in Ukraine. He's fighting America, not France. No disrespect, but I don't think France can claim the same level as the United States, can it? I mean, in, in what way? Economically? <laughs> Militarily? Culturally? No, you don't have Napoleon anymore, so... Your Louis the 16th, 15th, 14th, get him over there. Anyway, I'm not stopping. I don't want to insult uh, France or anything, but let's put it in perspective. I mean, we have clear values. You have clear numbers. You know, you, you, you can compare population, economy, militarily, culture. You can compare the, the surface, the territory. You can compare this influence all over the world. I mean, you were kicked out of Niger. Jesus. Christ. I'm talking about France. Let's move on. As I said, no disrespect. If you feel disrespected, that was not my intention. Now, if you feel, well, let's move on. The new voice of Ukraine, December 15th, 2023. Macron says he's ready to talk with Putin. When I saw that, I said, oh, that's very nice. Finally, wow, this guy's cracked, which I think that's exactly what happens. Oh, he's ready to talk to Putin. So that means he's not upset anymore. You know, narcissistic behavior was the, was in, in the past. It's gone. Now he goes and he's not going to give Putin the narcissistic uh, silent treatment. But no, you're going to see the little caveat if you behave. What? And Putin will say, Jesus Christ, man. Anyway, here it is. Is that a sign over there with his left hand? I knew at one point that meant, I don't know, some weasels tried to make it mean something mean. And look at this guy. <laughs> I want him to be, uh, you know, fired. French President Emmanuel Macron remains open to talk, talking to Putin should the Russian dictator become open to a genuine peace deal with Ukraine. French newspaper Le Monde reported on December 15th. So Emmanuel Macron... <laughs> He imposes, uh, how do you call it, uh, uh, conditions why he, un un under what circumstances he would talk to low Putin. If Putin is serious about it, if he's just like a clown, uh, like Zelensky, he's not going to talk to him. But he's, if he's serious like he is, you know, then yes. I mean, I no disrespect. How old is uh, his wife? 71 or something? And he's 45. So who's the serious one here? By all, um, you know, but let's look at this. Let's put, and the uh, high school. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh no. Okay. But Putin is the, not the serious one from the very beginning. Let's put it like this way. Why? Why? Because I look at the majority of relationships on this planet and I rarely, if ever, see something like this. Unless the other one is a billionaire and the other one is a uh, actress that is a little bit of a uh, lady of the night. All right. I have a few examples, you know, like uh, in the 30s or 40s, fucking an 80 year old billionaire. Now, is that a serious relationship? I'm not denying his love. I mean, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure I'm 100 percent, 100 percent certain that between uh, Macron and uh, his wife, I can't remember, Bridget, Brigitte Bardot, Brigitte, that was and still is pure love. I and was lost and all that. I guarantee you that I'm I don't deny it, but you try to uh, say something like this when, come on. But anyway, I have no problem with that. But uh, problem with that, I'm just saying it's not normal, is it? Normal meaning the average, the median, the usual. And he talks about Putin is not serious. When was it Putin not serious? A genuine peace deal. First, Putin told you yesterday, you again and again and again, what he expects and what he will achieve. In Ukraine. Anyway, he explained his readiness to speak with Putin, suggesting that dialogue could lead to an end to Russia's war against Ukraine. Macron knows he's not an idiot. 
he knows that the person he needs to talk to is not to the east of France, is to the west, a little bit to the north, northwest, and that is towards Washington. That's the guy. That's the guy. That's the location. He knows that. But I don't know, for whatever reason, he tries to be important. Remember when Macron was told, was asked rhetorically, not directly, by Zelensky, why is Macron always talking with Putin every day? Why do they have to talk? Why do they talk with the dictator? What did this great leader of France do? What did, it, what did he do? He stopped talking that day with Putin for about um, uh, a month and a half or two months. And then he spoke jointly with Putin together with Scholz together so he cannot be, you know, um, accused of anything. Now, th that's a leader. Remember, that's a clown called Zelensky put over there by outside forces voted by the Ukrainian people. And you tell me that uh, with a population that now is about 19 million people, there was about 40 million people. Ukraine, for God's sake. The French nation, I don't think they knew where, where Ukraine is located. If you ask them to tell you two cities, probably they would barely say Kiev. I guarantee you these guys that put all those flags on their cars or in this, their houses, if you ask them, give me three cities in Ukraine. Maybe they say Kiev, Kiev, because they heard it CNN. And that's about it. Tell them a population. Tell them their national day. Ask them, okay, where is the, when is the Ukraine national day? Tell me the population. What do you know about Ukraine? He's going to probably say, start now and start a, a stopwatch. Probably that person is going to talk about Ukraine for about a minute and everything is going to be from 2022 February on with the war, but nothing to, okay, give me two poets. Can you give me two uh, Ukrainian poets? Two, I don't know, composers. Two soccer players, something, gymnasts, whatever. Give me something and give me someone of a cultural meaning. Uh, Klitschko doesn't count, okay? <laughs> or brothers. or No, this is garbage. If you don't know anything about a country, how in the fuck are you supporting it? If you don't know anything. I'm generalizing, but go and ask at your work. And you see guys with uh, Ukrainian flags, go and ask them. Click, what do you know about Ukraine? Here's a oh, he hello. <laughs> anyway, let's go back to this article here. Macron talks with Putin under conditions. You in, in no place. First, Macron, let's go back to first. You, your not your, but your country's signature, uh, Holland, your guy before you, he signed the Minsk agreements. Your count, your country was legally bound to a document, legal document that was sent to the United Nations and became international law, that you are the guarantor of the Minsk agreements. And what did you do? Squat. So you failed. So we can say that actually this war that you right now are uh, accusing Russia of this and that is because of you, because you couldn't keep, couldn't keep your boy where he said he will be in peace. Wasn't that what, what's his name, Zelensky said? He campaigned on peace and then he was pushed into the war because the Russians just attacked like that, unprovoked, nothing, man, nothing, zero. My God. Is there any? Anyway, and I'm quoting, I didn't start the war unilaterally by violating agreements I had consented to, said Macron. What? I didn't start the war unilaterally. No, but your country... Your country did not um, um, honor agreements. Let me show you. So he thinks that we've forgotten here. He thinks that we've forgotten all this. I didn't start the war unilaterally. No, but you, uh, you didn't stop your boys from starting the war or at least uh, unprovoking, uh, unprovoking Russia. I had consented to. I mean, don't play dumb. I mean, don't play full retard now, Macron. I know you are not full retard. And I'm quoting, nor did France decide to commit war crimes in northern Ukraine. Wow, I dare Macron say the same thing about another uh, thing that happened around Mediterranean Sea. Most, uh, uh, is he going to say uh, war crimes? No. He's not going to mention that whatsoever. But he's so easy with his words regarding Russia. Do you think that we're tards? Yes, that's exactly what he thinks. Which vir virtually made discussions impossible. Really? Okay. Well, we must be serious. <laughs> uh, man, let me tell you. When a person talks about uh, 
a certain thing over and over and over, that means that could be projection right there. Right? And he said, uh, hence, I maintain a very single stance. I haven't changed my number. Nobody gives a fuck about you, Macron. What are you talking about? Are you crazy? He, he didn't change his number. That means Putin should beg him for talking, talk to him. Why? Why should Putin talk to Macron? You're not involved in this war. That's not your country. Why? You, you said you didn't commit anything, you didn't invade anything. So you're not... Why? Why shouldn't, let's say, the president of Zimbabwe say the same thing? Hey, Putin, you know my number, okay? Whenever you feel like and you're okay and serious, you call me. And Putin should say, oh, sorry, my friend. Uh, was, uh, can you find his phone number? I really need to talk to him. Why would Putin want to talk to France? France is an impotent political power. Why? Because it can't do anything without Washington's uh, 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 decision. If United States tells Macron you don't talk to Putin, Macron is not going to talk. If Washington tells Macron talk to Putin, he's going to call Putin. Garen fucking did. But recent, Putin recently remarked that he had quite good relations with the French president. But at some point, Macron ceased communication. That's exactly what happened. When the clown uh, scared Macron, the president of Ukraine scared uh, the president of France. And you expect the president of Russia to get scared of this fucker? Anyway, um, he says, in the initial weeks following Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, Macron, Macron spoke to Putin by phone several times, almost every day. The last conversation between the two presidents was on May 3rd, 2022. Go check that out. And then they spoke together with uh, Scholz. Now, let me tell you a little, um, a little personal story. Um, the same thing, you know my number. Um, I had in, um, in Romania, you go from the first um, grade to the eighth grade, basically with the same people in the classroom, the same colleagues. This, you got the primary school and the secondary school with the same guys. So it was over there that I went to school from the first grade to the eighth grade. And it was like a, a clown, I would say. He was not a bad kid, he was a smart kid, but he was a clown. He was not a guy that could be loyal. He wasn't loyal. He was not a guy who would fight. He was not a guy who would have girls. He was not a popular guy. He wasn't you know, he was not, uh, no, he was outside of the group or whatever. He was just odd. But I, I was okay with him. I mean, I didn't, uh, you know, hang around with him. He wouldn't play soccer. So if you don't play soccer well, you're a, pff. he wouldn't play sports. He wouldn't fight. You know, so, so that means he was a wuss, a puss, whatever you want to call. And I met this guy at one point and I was driving my car. He was driving his car uh, and I was, was with my girlfriend. He was with his girlfriend. And uh, surprise, surprise, he was with a girlfriend. And he, we stopped the cars like this next to one another on the road we met and uh, rolled down the, the window like this, not like that. And uh, he said, uh, hey, well, how are you? I mean, remember, we met when we were adults, I don't know, like 20, 26, 25, 26, like this. I mean, I haven't seen him much, but for me, it was the same guy because that's what he was anyway. So he told me he was with his girlfriend and he told me like, uh, yeah, how are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. He talked to me like we are equal or something. I, I, girlfriend, I'm not going to disrespect him in front of his girlfriend. Why would I do that? And you know, and at the end, he said, uh, he said, well, you know what? Uh, call me. You, go, you know, my, you got my number. Call me. Call me. We talk later. Call me. And he left. And I was like, son of a fucking bitch. I mean, look at this weasel. I wouldn't have stopped my car for that guy. I wouldn't. Maybe it wasn't later than that. It was later. I was older than, than 25. I was older than 25. But anyway, wasn't? Doesn't really matter. Yeah, I was a little bit. But anyway, I'm just talking. I wouldn't even say hello to this guy. I stopped just because I haven't seen him in a while. And uh, he was with a girlfriend. I respected that. I wouldn't take him, hey, Mofo, what the fuck are you doing? Why don't you shine my shoes right now? Uh, no, I was decent because I respected the situation. And he said, hey, you know my number, call me, call me, call me. I don't want to call you. I have nothing to talk to you. I call you. Are you crazy? The same here. I see uh, Macron as that guy, as that guy. Are you crazy? Do you think that Putin is going to call you? The same. Do you think I'm going to fucking call you? But that was like, Jesus fucking Christ. I was as nice as I could with this guy under the circumstances with his girlfriend. And he's just like, oh, motherfucker. <laughs> I started laughing. I don't know. I stayed over there like, 
I don't know, a few, I don't know, 20 seconds laughing and thinking, that is, what's going on? But that's the way he was, I guess. Anyway, not a bad guy, not a bad guy. But he sometimes lost the proportion or something. So here it is, my friends. Macron is ready to talk to Putin whenever Putin behaves and he's serious about it. So he's not juggling. Then he's going to talk to him. Jesus Christ. Can you imagine this? Yes, I can. These are the leaders of the West. And Macron and this guy called in the, or the beginning of the article, they called the dictator Putin. I remember another guy called Emmanuel, who about uh, two months ago or three months ago, at the mo I don't know, something like this, he signed on his own the pension reform by himself. He bypassed the National Assembly of France that was supposed to vote on that law, on the pension reform. He took it, he signed it, he, he made it law, he changed it. Everything constitutional. So who's more of, of a dictator? And then the Constitution the court said, yeah, that's constitutional, oh great. Yeah. And France is a democracy and a free country, my ass. Anyway, France, you, la nation, la grande France, non France nation is going to be a uh, Francaise. It's going to go down. It's been going like this since, what, the uh, 19th century at least. Oh, don't believe me? Look, why don't you look at uh, Napoleon's army for a while or for a change, all right? Just look and look. Um, there are paintings. There are paintings, go look around and you tell me. And if you want, if you don't want or if you want, just look at the French uh, soccer team and you tell me. Or maybe you can look in the arm and you see it's a lot of French. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.